Welcome to the Blessed Hope. Uh, this ministry is by our family. Every night we go through a particular part of the Bible as we study. We, as a family, are inviting you into our study. That the Bible says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I do these studies with my family so they can grow in the Lord, so they can know the Lord through the Word of God, by the Word of God, of the Word of God. It's the very importance. And we invite you to listen, to share, to learn with us too, the Word of God. We ask that you uh, share these, to give full liberty of sharing to your friends, to your family. We ask that you use these videos for the edification of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you abuse not these videos. They are to work for the Lord Jesus Christ, for edification, for growth. We thank you. Revelation chapter 7. And after these things I saw, key word, four. There's another number in the book of Revelation, four. Four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Now many people had a re big rebuke about that. And since man is going in outer space and taking pictures of the earth, there are four bulges. But I remember too a time that the U.S. Marines, I believe it was, or the Army, would have a banister out in front of their recruiting office. See the four corners of the earth. Four corners of the earth would be north, south, east, and west. Nothing wrong with it. Man, use it. Now, here we go. Holding the four winds of the earth. Now, how do you hold a wind? Even John chapter 3, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, you, know, you can't, the spirit is as like wind. You can't see it. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. The only way you can see wind is if it blows a leaf or something. Here are angels with the power to hold wind. It's interesting. Winds plural. Now watch this. That, he, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, well, no sea power, I mean, no sail power, nor on any tree. Now, I live in Florida. It's hot. I don't know when this is going to be, what season it's going to be. But I know it's hot in Israel. And we have a thing called here in Florida, we have the lake, lake wind effect. And it feels good on a hot day to get that breeze. Any breeze on a hot day feels good. But can you imagine if during the summertime, those angels are holding the wind, holding the breeze that you don't even get any relief from heat. You won't be able to have anything for your, your wind power to produce power. As I already said, no sailboats. Sometimes a wind on a very hot day of working feels good. No wind chimes will be chiming. And I saw another angel, five angels, fifth angel, ascending from the east, coming from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Four more angels. And they're given to hurt the earth and the sea. Protect Mother Earth. Protect the ocean. God says, I'll just give you four angels for that. How does that sound? As far as Mother Earth, wait to see what I got planned for her. Everything that man wants to protect, God says, it's gone. Wiped out. Eventually. Gone. That's it. The only thing that will ever remain is a man's soul. Now, I have quite a bit of debates with people when I raise that thing about animals going to heaven. No animal goes to heaven. Well, look, we come down on horses. Okay, we may come down on horses, but God did not die for animals to be saved. Because he would, he would provide a language for us to go speak to the lions, tigers, and bears. Oh, my. We can't speak to the animals about the gospel. You can talk to your parakeet or your dog all you want about the gospel. They're just going to look at you like, huh, where's the food? 
Man protects the wrong things. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. Does that sound good? Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. All right, you're going to do it, but wait a minute. Hold on. Got a little something to do before you begin your work. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. So here's a sealed group of people. We've already seen a sealed book being unsealed. And chaos happening. Even with the peace. Still it brings chaos. Because look what follows the peace. War, famine, death. So here's another sealing in the Bible. Revelation. They were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand. Now we got two problems here. You may not see it, but I see two problems. As far as the Jehovah Witnesses, we got the hundred forty-four thousand and one. We got a problem. So the Jehovah Witnesses have something what I've been told, and I'm not sure, but, but after that 144,001, there's, there's something else, but the original 144,000, blah, 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 and I know what the Bible says, for all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, Jehovah Witnesses will say that's them. Didn't we read somewhere about somebody saying that they were Jews and were found to be liars? There it is. Get a Jehovah Witness to admit to you, and most of them will, because they don't think there's anything wrong. Have an open Bible. Say, are you, or does your church believe you're the 144,000 spoken about Revelation? Maybe not you personally, but do you, and they will say yes. All right, then you take your Bibles to, to chapter 7, verse 4, say, other tribes of Israel, then run back to those two or three church periods where it said that call themselves Jews and are liars. Then you run over to 2 John and say, get off my doorstep. People who proclaim to be the 144,000 are calling themselves the children of Israel. Now we got another problem. I don't know if you knew there's a problem here with another religion. There's a, there's a religion out there, out west of America, multiple wives, that claim to be of Ephraim. The 144,000, Dan and Ephraim, are not in this list. Levi is mentioned as a tribe, and Levi has not been listed as a tribe since God said, when I brought you out of Egypt, I'm separating myself of the tribe of Levi for me. The firstborn. Now they'll show up later, Dan and Ephraim, but Dan is a quite remarkable character in the Bible. Dan. He assumes the type of the Antichrist. So, of the tribe of Judah, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben, were sealed 12,000. Ask your Jehovah Witness, which tribe are you? How do you know you're of that tribe? Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. The tribe of Aser were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Nephilim were sealed 12,000. The tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. That's Joseph's son. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Levi, the priest were sealed 12,000. The tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Joseph, usually he's broken into two. <coughs> broken into two. His son, Ephraim and Manasseh, were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000. Right, so here's a ceiling on 144,000. Another problem. You belong to a religious outfit that you're the 144,000 and you're going through the tribulation period when the church has been brought out. You know, they don't ever call their buildings churches. They call it halls. So I guess they're actually fit and doctrinally correct because they do stock up goods and all that. They do want the desire of being in the tribulation. I don't know why. 
But and after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, a whole lot of people, which no man could number. That's interesting. All nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before, that's not the Charismatics, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, capital L, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Okay, I'm going to show you in a minute, that's not the church. That's not us. And it's not Palm Sunday. Why are they carrying palms? I don't know. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, capital L. And all the angels stood around about the throne. There's an there's assembly of all the angels. And about the elders, there's the four and twenty-four elders, and the four beasts. And fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. These are the people in the multitude, verse 9. Saying, Amen. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. Check that back with chapter 4, what, what the beasts say. Check that with what the 24 elders say. It gets better and better worshiping God. Be unto God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders, one of the 24, answered, said unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Whence came they? And then one of the 24 elders steps away from glorifying and praising God, turns to John and said, Who are these people? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Thou know, I don't know who they are. On 611, white robes were given unto every one of them. It was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season, unto their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed, as they were, should be fulfilled. These, in verse 9, are the ones mentioned in 611. Who have been killed. Watch. Verse 14. He said. Sir thou knowest. And he said to me the elder. These are they which came out of great. Tribulation. Last three and a half years. And have washed their robes. And made them white in the blood. Of the capital L. Lamb. These are Jewish. Tribulation saints. Found to have been killed. Chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. But these are the ones after verse 9. Remember in verse 9? It, oh Lord God, when are you going to avenge it? Hold on, there's going to be more people killed. Here they are, verse 9 in chapter 7 to 13. Now let's go back to 9 again, verse 9 of chapter 7. Now I'll show you scripture with scripture. But before we go back to verse 9, now let's look at this. We got this multitude from the tribulation period, verse 9 of chapter 6. We got this multitude, verse 9, chapter 7. You got the 24 elders. You got the four beasts. You got the assembly of the, of the angels. And we've already read, I think it was chapter 5. We're there too. Do you realize the multitude and the multitude of the hosts that are standing before God? And do you read anywhere where we're casting crowns down or anything? Sounds good. But let's go to verse 9, chapter 7. And I'll show you something. And after this I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number. All nations and kindreds and people. And tongues stood before the land, the, before the throne, and before the land. Now let's go to Acts chapter two, verse five. Now it could be some Gentiles who will stand up for the Lord, but Acts chapter two, verse five. The Bible says, 
There and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. These are Jews that have moved themselves out of Israel and all the countries. They were amazed and marveled and said one to another, Behold, are not these which speak Galilean? How hear every man his own tongue? Wherein we were born, Parthia, and it goes through all the list of names, so I don't want to go through those names again. How we hear every man in his own tongue. That's 2.8. And in 2.7, uh, or 2, said, na one, said nation somewhere. Uh, 2.5. Every nation under heaven. 7 9 matches chapter 2 of Acts. And you know what Peter preaches when he gets in there? He starts preaching Joel. And the second advent. Kind of interesting. Now, I'm not going to say there's no Gentiles here, but 144,000 Jews were just sealed. These 144,000 Jews are going out preaching to Jews. As a result, there's a great multitude of people after the great tribulation. They're getting killed. What were they killed for in, in chapter 6, verse 9? For the word of God. Now the word of God's really getting out. And we are in a great tribulation. So, verse 15. By the way, notice verse 14. They're washed in the blood of not sacrifices, but of the Lamb. And they have to offer sacrifices too because they're still under, it's the law and the blood of Jesus Christ. Now do you see where Satan gets that in the church age? He stole it from the tribulation period. And I would think that Satan's so slick and so to deceive people, I think, this is my own personal opinion, that when it comes to tribulation period, I believe he's going to preach salvation by faith alone, minus no works, not of works, least any man should boast. I would believe that's what would be his plan of salvation for the world. Because he's got it messed up today, faith and work. Paul had to address churches about that mess. One church got into that mess. So, and, all right, now, what about this, this Jewish regiment here that have been killed? Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. This is earth time. Because later on we're going to find out we're not going to need the sun or moon. This is while the rest of the tribulation period is going on. While it's day and night on the earth. These people are going to stand before God. Praising God. Because they're going to take a lot of abuse from Satan himself. When they're washed in the blood of the land and they're saved, man. It's, it's not like the church age today. It's death. It's persecuted. Serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Israel. Israel is God's bride. Jesus is the king of the Jews. Jesus' bride is the church. God's bride is the Jews. And he's going to take them right for himself in the throne these they're called out almost like he did with the tribe of Levi called out one particular group of people and you can't say that Jesus is the king of the of the church because the church is not a kingdom of heaven we don't conquer lands in the name of Jesus Christ the Jews will the Jews have the promise of a land grant we have the promise of, of spirituality of new jerusalem they shall need they shall hunger no more they're not going to eat these people out of the tribute neither sh yeah, neither thirst anymore they won't have any need for a drink what about to everybody else in heaven i don't know because in Psalms, god says when i fed the people manna he gave them angels food are we going to eat in heaven? If we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. 
I'm going there with Jesus Christ. I ain't going to think about my belly. The Bible says your belly could be a God. If we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. We may, but here are ones that are not going to eat. They're not going to drink. We know that. Here it is. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Well, the sun is down below. It's on the earth. They're going to have God's light light in them. For the Lamb, capital L, which is in the midst of the throne, right there in the middle, shall feed them. Well, what's he going to feed them if they don't have food or hunger or thirst? When the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them into living fountains of water. That is what he was telling the woman at the well at John chapter 4. So this is not physical. And if you're going to run the physical, you're going to do the same thing that the Roman Catholics do, messing up John chapter 6. And that fountains of living water, according to the Gospel of John, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is sent to teach. They're going to be taught by God and Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. Man shall not live by, but by every word. Of, so see, there is where it's coming. So when Satan said, feed yourself right now. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Here's the application to the Jews that come out of the great tribulation. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. As far as we are concerned, Christians, that's not us. Because Revelation 21 says that's when God's going to wipe our tears when New Jerusalem comes down. And we've settled in there. So here's a group of people that they get their tears wiped away right here. Our tears don't get wiped through Revelation 21. So scripture with scripture, when you match it, then you can put the pieces together and find out who we're talking about. There are three classifications of people. The Jewish people, the church, and unsaved individuals, which consist of Gentiles and Jews. This passage is talking about Jews and the 144,000. So guess who would you think would suck up to this verse as a Gentile say, oh, look at all the promises we're going to get. Look at all the great things that God's going to do. And we as a group of body of people will be right there before God. God's going to honor us. And we'll just humbly show up at your doorstep. And what do you guys say to that? And there were people that called themselves Jews and you found out they're, they're liars. And when you take the blessing away from the Jews, you're cursing that Jew. The Bible says, I will curse them that curse you. So get off my doorstep. Read John, read Second John. That's an interesting thing. So when we're in heaven, we are watching Jesus unseal these seals. There's a sealing going on on the earth. There have been people who speak out that the fourth seal... We're going to be there. We're going to hear voices coming out from the throne of God. God, when are you going to avenge us? And then like we were raptured, there's going to be another rapture, a bunch of tribulation saints after three and a half years. They're going to pop up there. They're going to, there's one thing I know. We're going to get white raiment. We're going to be wearing white in heaven. And they're going to step up right to the throne of God. They're going to step up right to God. And they're going to praise God. They're going to fall down God. They're going to worship God. Even before... The, in front of the beast, in front of four twenty-four elders, and we're never going to see them back off. Because aren't you glad we're as Baptists? We're going to get a new nature, a new body. Because some of those Baptists will be saying, "What well, gives them the right to stay there?" Mm -hmm. See, not of works, least any man boast. What are you guys doing up there? I right, look at all the people I had in Sunday school. Look at all the people at Vacation Bible. Look at all the mission. See, that's all gone. It's all about God and Jesus Christ, and no more envy. And we're just going to see them up there. We may not even know their story. Oh, it's going to be one hallelujah to one. God and Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. And then after that, Lord willing, tomorrow, 
Then we're going to break back in the seal. Then we're going to get into the trumpet and just complete terror on this earth. And what am I doing? As a saved, born again, Bible believing Christian, I'm up there praising God. Now, if you want to go through this mess, Bible correct of the word I can apply to your application is a fool. You are a fool to want this. Like I tell you, you ask my family, I will tell you are a fool if you want to go to hell. I have people tell me a couple weeks ago, God, God, I'm going to hell, I got reserved seats. You are a fool. That's a Bible. So when those people come knocking on your doors, they're bringing damnation. Praise God. We're going to be praising God. Praising God. 